So, Paulo, you and Talibay again have a special relationship. And you once told me that you could hear him talking to you. What turned you around from traditional training to connecting deeper with horses? Well, after I thought that I was being the boss and saying what he has to do, and he would only give up at the last moment, and it wasn't like what I wanted, I just, I just felt that when we were in a stressful environment, as horse shows and everything, he would be always looking for his groom. Like, uh, I would... I would we come in clear round in the course. If I cross the gate, the groom was there. He was like uh, opening the turns to get there and even trotting. And then he would find a uh, uh, um, relaxing, uh, safe uh, place with the groom. So uh, I was speaking with my groom. I said, what are you doing? I said, like, listen, I feed him, I pet him, I brush him. I, I When he comes over, hit it from your work. I refresh him, so I really believe that he has uh, identified me that the good guy and you the bad guy that he has to deal with. So I said, well, it looks a little bit crazy, but I will start maybe doing what you do and see if it creates a little bit more respect and he understands that we have a partnership that I'm not, nobody told him that he works for me. He is just like being loyal to the human beings that he was told when he was young. So that's when I started like uh, having a very close um, relationship by feeding, by brushing, by washing, riding, and trying to make him understand that we had a mission and as a kid to, to, to work. And I guess by this thing, I got much more um, feedback from him by, by respecting me instead to fear me. And when I got respect, I could rescue the extraordinary horse that he had inside, instead to make him an ordinary, uncomfortable horse that was not happy what he was doing. Tell me just a little bit more about, you, t you talk about the mental connection with the horses, and I think you've had a special relationship with Talibay. Uh Was there anything particular that Talibay communicated to you besides not wanting to work and, and go toward the groom? Is there anything that you felt from him that changed your perception of horses? After <laughs> after we start having a... Uh, I, I never believed on this. I even tried to tell to my kids, I don't over bad them. They need to learn what's right, what's wrong. Now that we, we had <laughs> like a close... I, I really came back to go with the cowboys and listen to what they were doing because they really can have like a, a full submission with passive uh, in, well, some of them we know that there's other uh, tactics but the, the I, I can feel now that I, I go to the barn and if I whistle my horse responds anywhere he is like uh, he he sees my movement and he knows if I'm going to to get him a, a treat or coming to ride and he will really like uh, say there's a day that you go to the stall the horse is with ears like the, I'm not in the mood so we can switch the days they're kicking or going and sometimes I have to say like today you have to do it it's, this is it if you don't want to do it, that's that's the Monday morning school mission that you have to do. So we have we have lots of much much more like for eye contact. That's where I can interpret it more what what they they're thinking. And I believe if every single rider starts, most most of them they do it. But every single rider if they start paying more attention, what the eyes of their horses are telling them, they will really get a. a a way better interpretation than what should be possible to be done in each day of riding. So would you say that you treat your horses like your kids? Sometimes like my wife. 